here I am today at the Air and Space Museum in Washington DC and I seriously feel like a kid in a candy store here. This place is awesome. I don't know where to go first. I mean, you've got a Gemini capsule right there. Real Gemini capsule. You've got a Mercury one. Lots of cool planes. <gasps> And I think that might even be the X-1 up there, the first ever plane to travel faster than the speed of sound. Um, wow. I don't know which way to go. Left, right, up. Um, I might have to come back here tomorrow. So after an hour or so I've actually managed to get out of the, uh, the front entrance way and at the moment I'm in probably what I would call like a second hall of really cool stuff to look at. Um, over here we have uh, some models of uh, some life-size models of uh, launch vehicles that have been used by both NASA and the Russians. Over there, that is a model of the V-2 rocket used by the Germans during World War II. And was the first uh, mass-produced uh, rocket. Um, unfortunately used for destructive purposes, but nonetheless uh, very effective. And this is quite fantastic. This was the uh, backup Skylab um, uh, uh, space station uh, that never actually made it into orbit. Uh, I will have to get inside and have a look. Um, I think the, uh, the nine astronauts that uh, got to spend time on that thing were, uh, were in for a real treat. I think that that would have been one of the highlights of uh, of uh, being an astronaut there. Um, here we have a model of uh, Vostok and just behind it uh, Mercury. They were the first launch vehicles used by the Russians and the Americans to put them in space. Uh, there is a scale model replica of the Hubble Space Telescope and as we move around, last but not least, we've got the Apollo Soyuz test project that was the first time there was an international meeting of humans in space. Um, it may think that for six people that was uh, quite a, a nice sizable aircraft and uh, things like that to, to be in, but uh, I mean what we have here is the Apollo and you've got the engine at the back and if I walk down here you can see that the three people actually had to live in the nose cone. The whole big part of the bottom was basically uh, for carrying the fuel, water, oxygen etc to make the flight possible. So there wasn't actually any living space there. Um, you know, Space flight in the 60s and the 70s would have been a fantastic adventure, but gee, he wouldn't have much room in those things. And here we have a scale model replica of the Eagle. The Eagle, of course, was uh, part of the Apollo 11 vehicle that actually landed on the moon and took with it uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Um, one thing that I find so amazing about all these vehicles is although from the outside they look quite big, the actual uh, living, working and operating room inside them was tiny. Um, you know, all this area uh, here with the foil, that would have been all uh, all engines and up the top 
uh, all those funny compartments you would have had uh, mainly storage for water and oxygen and things like that uh, so really there was just about enough room to sit down and uh, maybe look out of a window and enjoy the view of the lunar surface but uh, they were lucky the astronauts here would have uh, got the opportunity to step outside and uh, explore the lunar surface and uh, I don't know about you but I would give almost anything to have done that I think that would have been absolutely amazingly fantastic and if they ever do uh, cost uh, affordable um, trips to the moon I think you'll find that uh, I will definitely be signing up for one but uh, unfortunately it looks like that ain't gonna happen in my lifetime so best I can do is come here and admire the machines that took man there almost 50 years ago now I'm taking this video just to give you an idea of the sheer size of the, the rockets they use to uh, send man to the moon I'm glad this guy is actually just walking front right now because it gives you uh, some idea of scale. I'd say that guy there is about uh, six foot. Um, now that was one feet of the uh, the aft end of the rocket that would have uh, taken man to the moon. So you could just imagine putting uh, those rockets all together in a cross-shaped pattern. How big and tremendous the the amount of thrust you'd get from. Uh, that rocket would be it was seven and a half million pounds of thrust uh, for the first minute and a half that took uh, man to the moon then of course uh, that section would uh, drop off and uh, land somewhere in the Pacific Ocean and a second stage would uh, take it to uh, an orbital uh, velocity and an orbital height too